Hello, my dear class 9 students, welcome back. So let's get started with our second part of uh, this third chapter, that is atoms and molecules, okay? So uh, today we'll discuss about Dalton atomic theory, clear? So uh, yesterday we have studied about atoms. Yesterday we have studied about compounds, elements, right? And we have studied law of uh, chemical combination, which was uh, which where we have two laws that is law of conservation of mass and law of uh, definite proportion clear so after that we have dalton atomic theory and it was given by dalton itself clear this dalton itself so here we have six postulates okay we have six postulates so all the postulates are important clear so now the first postulate about this dalton atomic theory is that uh, matter is made up of extremely okay extremely tiny particles tiny particles called atoms so this is the first postulate, students. Are you clear with this one? This we have uh, discussed yesterday as well. But here, Delton is confirming, clear, with, uh, is proving with an experimental theory, clear. So this is the first postulate. Now, the second postulate is atoms of same elements. are identical identical means it is same okay so that means atoms of same elements are identical clear uh, so uh, let's take example yesterday I've given example about apple right even apple though it's the same if we have hundred apple though it's the same apple we have different shape and size clear so that can happen even in any other fruit as well Right, but here when we are talking about atoms, atoms of same element are identical. Means if we take the same element atom from any country, it will be same. The shape here, the shape, size, okay, size, mass, okay, mass, and chemical property. chemical property so that means they are they will be identical in their shape in their size in their mass and in their chemical property clear so if we have okay now this is hydrogen okay this is a symbol of hydrogen if we have 100 hydrogen all the 100 uh, hydrogen atoms will be identical in all this property clear now uh, let's talk about uh, third postulates for Dalton atomic theory, which will be opposite of the uh, which uh, second postulates. So, my dear students, the third postulates would be atoms of different different elements are different. Okay, that means they are not identical. So now um, we'll take water as an example. Clear? Now in water we have H2O is the formula of chemical formula of water. So here we have two hydrogen atoms. That means two hydrogen will be same. And then here we have one oxygen atom. Clear? So all together we have three atoms here, right? Two plus one. But since these are different elements, Clear. Hydrogen is different and oxygen is different. Their size, their shape, their mass, their chemical properties will be different. Okay? So students, uh, we are, uh, are you all clear with the first three postulates? Now we'll ha we have another three postulates. Okay? All together we have six postulates under Dalton Atomic Theory. Okay? So now we'll start with the four postulates. Okay, so students, the fourth postulates. Okay, the fourth postulate, it is 
uh, different elements combine to form a compound in a in in a simple whole number ratio. Clear. Different elements. Combine, okay. Combine to form a compound in a simple whole number ratio. Clear? So students, uh, like this is also I've explained yesterday, I've taken an example of water, right? Now suppose if we have, this is, now if we have one volume, okay, one gram of this water, clear? That means the ratio is one eight, right? So now even if we have 100 grams, okay, even if we have 50 grams, everything will be round up to this simple whole number ratio. It is not going to change, clear? Now, the fourth postulate The fourth postulate is done. Now, this is our fifth postulate. Okay. Now, the fifth postulate is that matter can never be created nor be destroyed. During, during any physical or chemical change, in any physical or chemical change, the left hand side and the right hand side should be equal and must be equal, okay? Any physical change. So yes, this P is for physical, okay? Just to save time, I'm just writing P and chemical change. change. Clear. Now, students, we, uh, the last we have our last postulate. That is the six postulates. Okay. Now, the six postulate is the relative. The relative number and kind of atoms are constant. In a given in in a given compound so students the six postulate states that in any compound okay in any compound the number and the kind of atoms are fixed and constant we cannot make any change clear so students this is all about the six postulates all the six postulates are important and then this uh, these postulates are frequently asked in your exams as well clear so please go through these six postulates, uh, write down the notes as well, clear? Okay, so students, now our next topic is size of atom, okay? So do you know how small an atom is? Okay, so students, atoms are very small that uh, we measure atoms in nanometer, okay? Nanometer. Usually, we are familiar with meter or kilometers, right? This much like makes one meter, right? But atoms, we have to measure in nanometer, okay? Nanometer. So now, uh, nanometer, uh, for meter, we write N, right? So for nanometer, we represent by N, N. Clear? So atoms, we have to measure in N, N. So now... Students, do you know that in 1 mm, okay, 1 nanometer, 1 nanometer is equal to 
10 to the power minus 9 meter. That means how small 1 nanometer is. Right? So that means it will be... See, students, this much small it is in 1 nanometer. Clear? So now let's talk about the size of atom. So, uh, for one atom, okay, the size of one atom is 10 to the power minus 10 meter. Clear? So this is the size of one, okay, this is for hydrogen, okay? Hydrogen, I'm taking the first one, hydrogen. Size of one hydrogen atom. Size of one hydrogen atom is 10 to the power minus 10 meter. That means it will be like this. This much small it is an atom. See, students, can you imagine this much small it is? Do you know the uh, just relative size uh, size of an uh, the radius of an uh, ant for an ant? Okay, an ant. The size is. 10 to the power minus 2 meter. And n is very small, right? That means if we write... Okay. And n will be like this, right students? Then you compare it with an atom. How small it is. Clear? So this is all about the size of an atom. We have taken an example of an hydrogen, one hydrogen atom that is 10 to the power minus 10 meter. Clear? So uh, that is all about the size of atom. Now we'll discuss about the mass of an atom. Okay, so students, now our next topic is mass of an atom. Okay, now uh, for this, we take an, okay, I'll give an example. Okay, I'll give an example. Sometimes if a shopkeeper, if you went to a shop, uh, if you went to shop to buy a, a fruit, okay, let's say a fruit. And then, so the shopkeeper have to measure, right? But if he, if he don't have a measuring weight, okay, measuring weight, then some, uh, he will take something equivalent to a one kilo, right? So if maybe four apple is uh, one kilo, Right, that means he's using apple as a measuring weight, right? Sometimes uh, there's sometimes in case like if you don't have a measure weight, measuring weight, okay? So in that case, for the size of an atom, um, the relative standard which is used is carbon 12 atom. Clear, we use this carbon 12 atom. So mass of one atom, mass of one atom would be would be one twelfth of carbon atom. Okay, that means this is carbon twelve. Okay, so for this, just take a example like uh, watermelon. Watermelon. If you just slice it into 12 pieces, okay? If you just slice it into 12 pieces, and if you just take out one slice, okay? So that's an example, okay? Watermelon, if you just slice it into 12 pieces, from one watermelon, you just take one slice, okay? Out of 12 slice, you take one slice. So we are taking example of one out of 12, right? So same as for the mass of an atom, we take one twelfth of carbon atom. Okay, so are you clear with this? Now, students, you have to know the mass of at least uh, 20 atoms, okay? 20 atoms to be able to uh, write the chemical formula or to, ab to be able to calculate their molecular mass in, in general. For a class 9 standard, at least you should be able to write the, 20, the mass of 20 atoms, clear? So we'll discuss about that now. And it is there in your textbook, so you can also refer to your textbook again, okay, chapter number third, the mass of an atom. Clear? Okay, so students, the mass of an atom, the unit it is AMU. Okay, so AMU means atomic mass unit. Clear? This means atomic mass unit. Clear. 
So now, say example, if we are writing the ma mass of a hydrogen atom, that means hydrogen is one, okay? So we'll write a and u, okay? But nowadays, we don't use this one. We use a unified mass, okay? We use a unified mass that is represented by a letter u, okay? U, a small u, that is uh, u like an umbrella, clear? So we can write in this way. And students, do you know who takes care of all this thing? Clear? The name, the symbol, the who, uh, there's an institution, okay? There's an organization that takes care of all this the, uh, with the units or element symbol and all, okay? So the name of that organization would be IUPAC, okay? So students, the full form of IUPAC would be international. Union of pure of pure and applied chemistry. Okay, so this union takes care of all this, uh, whatever changes and whatever things are to be made, like for or related with the elements. Or related to the chemistry in general clear so uh, students we have discussed about the Dalton's atomic theory we have discussed about the size of an atom we have discussed about the mass of an atom okay and then uh, the other part of the mass of an atom that is we will discuss about the mass of some elements okay like from hydrogen till calcium will study because we'll be needing their mass to calculate the molecular mass okay so in this chapter 3 you also have a numerical question numerical best question where you have to calculate the total molecular mass clear so this the mass is important so the other part will continue in our next class so till then just copy down whatever we have discussed clear thank you so much students see you in the next class